my gosh, this has been such a fun day so far. Crazy energy, and I love the blaze thing. This is like a, um, a women's leadership burning man. You know, you got some Bollywood dancing and uh, networking. I'm sure they network at Burning Man now. So um, I am an improviser and a comedian um, and a coach, and I have found that all the tools of improv comedy are the same tools that we need in our everyday lives, in our relationships and in work. So just to start out, how's your pandemic going? Just a breeze, no change, nothing unexpected. Um, so what we're gonna learn today is how to handle the unexpected, and that's basically what I've kind of become an expert in by being an improviser. We wanna know how do we get comfortable and confident with change and where we, with the unpredictability of life, okay? So we're gonna just start right here. We're gonna play some games today too, and we're gonna bring some people up on stage. I think they know who they are to be our volunteers. So this is kind of the list. This is actually in your book on page 29, so you can just look at it later, but I'm gonna go through the eight tools of improv just briefly, and then we're gonna go through them a little more slowly and give you a chance to try some of these things out. So the first thing is that you want to do as an improviser um, and in any problem-solving leadership roles is you want to stay really present. You need to listen, right? So how many people just kind of space out during staff meetings sometimes? It's okay, you can admit it, okay. Uh, and I think it, it is really hard because sometimes you're planning ahead, right? You're thinking about options. You're also thinking about dinner, you know, any of these things. I ha I'm trying to decide whether to tell you this story right out of the gate, but um, I had one experience recently where I was at a big outdoor theater um, festival with my improv troupe. And we were doing a scene called movie genres. If you've seen improv before, like you're doing a scene and then they go, you know, romantic comedy and you switch and then they go adventure and you switch into that. And somebody from the audience yells, porn. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, this is a family audience. Like what, what? And so, I don't know, I kind of like sauntered over to one of the guys on stage with me and just kind of like shimmied up to him. And he leans over and he whispers in my ear, they said foreign film. So like immediately I whip out a cigarette and a French accent and it's like, it's fine, you know, close call, but I was not there. You know, I was thinking way, way, way ahead about where the scene was gonna go and that doesn't work. The yes and principle, raise your hand if you've heard of that. It's a very popular phrase now. Yeah, I used to um, bring this up years ago and nobody had heard of it. The yes and principle, so instead of somebody, you're in a staff meeting, someone comes up with an idea and someone's like, no, no, no. You know, have you ever seen that or had that happen to you? Um, you don't feel heard. It just completely shuts it down. That's sort of called negation. In improv, the yes and principle is this. Some, there's, you're in a scene, someone says, hey, look at that pink elephant. And the other actor goes, what pink elephant? What happens to the scene and the idea? Yeah, it just pfft, dies. So instead you want, you don't literally have to like the idea or say yes, you want to do the idea. The idea is that you're, you're accepting the information that, that they have given you as an idea, and you're adding to it. So, you know, yes, uh, yes, pink elephant, yes, and it's standing on your mother-in-law or whatever. Um, and then the scene can go on and you have some ideas. That's the yes and principle. Um, the third one on here is being flexible, spontaneous, thinking on your feet. That's kind of what you think of when you think of improv, like the most important thing, right? We're gonna, we're gonna talk about that a little bit more too. And surrendering attachment to a goal. Now, this one's tricky because often we're given goals by um, our leaders, um, employers, um, or the, you know, the market or whatever. So the trick is to surrender your attachment to the specific goal and the specific way of getting there, right? So um, actually, no, let me talk about that a little bit later. I'll keep going quickly through these. Number five is take creative risks. That's pretty obvious. You want to create a culture in which it's okay for people to take risks, where they feel comfortable giving those yes and ideas out, not getting shot down. Gag your inner critic. I'm going to send you guys home, whoever wants, with a, um, 
a way to get the inner critic worksheet. We're gonna turn our inner critic into an inner coach, because inner critics are basically useless, they don't help us at all, um, and a coach is much more neutral and helpful, so we're gonna do that. Get lost, this is one of my favorite ones. So in an improv game, you're always getting lost. Um, gosh, during the pandemic, I mean, we've all been lost, like I'm home with a toddler. I mean, I'm not, I'm 53, but uh, <laughs> um, I was home with menopause. Uh, <laughs> You know, you're home um, with a kid, you're trying to work, um, you can't communicate with your staff anymore, all kinds of being lost. And um, there's always this messy middle. We all know somebody who got divorced and then hooked up with someone two months later that was exactly the same person, right? We've all seen that happen. So what you need to do is being more comfortable with a messy middle while you're still changing to figure out who you're gonna become. And all of this leads to number eight, which is being authentic and creative. So these are the tools that we use to handle everything. <clears throat> and confidence is what comes out of it. Now, I love a good power pose, but power poses are not the only thing that work. Confidence comes from doing. So this is all a practice that I'd love you guys to be able to take home, use in your staff meetings or around the dinner table or just in your own life. Everything we're talking about today and the, uh, it'll, you'll have the reminder in your in your book on page 29 to help with that. Okay, so going back to stay present, what, what is your first reaction to this? Just yell. Too, too hard, blah, someone said blah. What else? Ouch, <laughs> scary, a lot of stairs, that's a lot of stairs. So what do we think if we're present, so little kids are really present, right? So what's the kid's thought? Just that one stair, right? He's just looking at this, he's like, want to climb stair, right? And that is the kind of mindset that we wanna be in for problem solving and collaboration and creativity. The want to climb stair, I should name my next book that. Want to climb stair um, idea. So staying present. And the way that we collaborate well, um, is through the yes and exercise. So we're gonna do a yes and exercise right now with the person next to you. So one of you will start and the other will respond. So the first person will say, hey, don't I know you from, and they'll fill in the blank, like, hey, don't I know you from Jose and Jenny's wedding? The, your partner will respond, yes, and that was the day when I blank, and they'll make up something, decided to become a nun or whatever. Um, so you don't use weddings or nuns, <laughs> you make up your own, and then once you've done that, switch, and the person who went first now goes second and do a new set that has nothing to do with the first set. Does that make sense? Okay, ready, go, and I'll clap to bring you back. Let's go. Okay. Good. How did that go? There's a lot of laughing. Was that hard? Raise your hand if it was hard. Raise your hand if it was easy. So sometimes one or the other is hard. Being like the person who starts, like coming up with something out of the blue is harder for you. And that's a good thing to track, just for life. And then if it was harder for you to be like, I just have to respond to what they gave me. And I, you know, like that can be harder. So just, I think it's a really fun exercise to do like at a staff meeting as well to just try to see where your comfort level is with all that. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna bring a bunch of guys, my volunteers up in one second, and being flexible, thinking on your feet, and we're gonna do um, the one word story game. Actually, can I just have one person real quick? One of you just run up with a microphone. So this is a one word story. It's very, very simple. All we're gonna do is, <laughs> hi. Um, all we're gonna do is tell a story together, like the dog went to the store kind of thing, okay? And we'll, somebody shout out a noun. Umbrella. Umbrella? umbrella? It's not umbrella, I think it's something funnier, but I can't hear it, so we're going with umbrella. Uh, okay, so um, we're just gonna do a quick story, just keep your mic up. Uh, mm -hmm. okay, yesterday. I went. Okay, so you can only say one word. Oh, uh -huh. okay. yesterday. I, I went to the store and 
broke their cart. <laughs> That's great. Okay, good. I'm going to stop you right there, and you guys are going to come up in a sec. Good job. Okay. That was very funny. It was funny because it was unexpected. We had no idea she was going to go there. It allowed her to come up with, I want to hear the rest of that story. How did you break their heart? Um, okay, so the whole point was, was it, was it, how was it for you just being like, I, I don't have to plan the whole thing. I'm just going to see where it goes. Was that a comfortable spot for you? Or are you like, I'm a control freak? <laughs> I don't know if you want to admit that in front of 2,000 people, but okay. <laughs> All right, great. So are, uh, anyone an overachiever here? I love this picture. Or a perfectionist? No, perfectionism is not the way to solve problems or to collaborate. The, and that's really, really important by understanding that it's not the way to get to our goals. So instead, what we want is to be unattached, like we talked about before, to the specific goal. And one more. And we want to be very present, so to what's happening in the moment. Okay, run up here, you guys. Um, come on up, and I'm going to use, yeah, come on up my, my table here. So we're going to tell a story together. Can you bring one mic? Thank you. So give them a round of applause. Okay, we're going to be very quick because I'm going to run out of time. So make me like a little a cappella choir. <laughs> okay, right there. Good. So, oh, wow, this is amazing. Okay. So... We're going to do a storytelling choir real quick here. And you got, come downstairs so they can see you better. And they, you guys will not know where this story is going. OK? And you can't plan. So try to just be like really present. You have to pick up where somebody left off. It'll go like this. Like, the dog went to the store and broke someone's heart. <laughs> OK? So if I come off, you have to stop talking the minute I come off. And you have to pick up right where they left off, OK? So once upon, I'm going to start this story. Um, once upon a time, there was an evil bake sale. And an evil witch. Good, keep going. Uh, that put something in it. <laughs> and it was bad. <laughs> and I didn't want to buy it. But it was so good at the same time. The delicious smell of everything made. Everything delicious in the world you could ever dream of was in that room, uh, and she just kept cooking as much as she could. And then she stopped cooking because she had a heart attack. <gasps> she was not very happy, and she was not in the mood to do anything because she had a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> and finish, who didn't I get? Finish the story. And then she rose from the dead. Okay, good. Very much. Thank you. Beautiful. You guys can sit down. Good. Excellent. She was clearly not in this building with healthcare upstairs. Good job, you guys. Okay, so you can see the brain's thinking, right? Like, you can be somebody who's thinking ahead. <clears throat> That's not a problem. The problem is when you get stuck on that idea. Anyone have that experience where you're like, ugh, this whole staff meeting has just like derailed. It's gone off on this totally different direction than I was planning, and I'm still standing here holding on to my idea. And it, <laughs> she's nodding. And it doesn't really work. Um, so that is what these exercises are to practice, to help you. Now, you can do this in any other way, you know, on your own. You can do it like painting or cooking or whatever. All creativity has an element of this in it. So what does it take to have, um, what, ta what does it take to be successful in this way? You need to embrace constraints. Oh, I'm running out of time. OK, I'm going to move a little bit quicker. So constraint breeds creativity, which is a really important thing. When you are feeling constrained, you need to stop and say, this, this is going to allow me to find something more creative out of it, OK? So when we're constrained, such as I gave them the idea of, of the opening sentence for that scene, then they're constrained, which is actually really helpful, because if I was just like, tell a story, go. That's just sort of overwhelming, OK? This is one of my favorite quotes, take creative risks. No one's ever done this before. That's why it's going to work. I'm going to send you guys also um, 
sorry, the gag your inner critic thing, and I'm gonna send you also um, a thing on being lost. These are ways that you can practice being lost out there in the world that are kind of fun. You wanna find a way to enjoy being lost. Now, all of this leads to authenticity. Can I have one more minute, is that okay? Sarah, okay. All right, just really quick. Take a pen, take a piece of paper. <laughs> this is about authenticity, okay? So, write down Katie Goodman, that's me. Katie Goodman is blank, blank, and blank. Three adjectives, not like wearing a white suit or a brunette, but something more like on an emotional, psychological level. I will not see this. You can write whatever you want. Katie Goodman is blank, blank, and blank. Do it kind of quickly. <laughs> Okay. I have kind of tricked you. This is a projection exercise. So in a room like this, there will be a thousand different words used. It's really interesting. And over the years, I mean, no one's like, Katie Goodman's a wallflower and really quiet, but. <laughs> um, so can you say yours really qu quick, three? Innovative, what else? Funny, Funny and? Smart. So those three words are about you. They're not about me, okay? So they're either things that you already are, which I'm guessing is true, or things you value and you want, right, that are important to you. Out of all of the things that you see in other people, and this is a trick you can do with your boss or your spouse, I suggest you don't tell your spouse if you're doing this with them. And of course, if they're bad, they're also about you. <laughs> so taking a look at what you want to be authentically by projecting onto other people what seems really like either great in them or not so great in them. And that is a really easy trick to find your authenticity. And all seven of these other steps will lead you to being your own authentic self without apology, okay? So, I wish I had more time. You guys are so much fun and uh, really willing to play. Thank you to that table. And just in closing, I really hope that you'll take some of this back and give it a chance to really practice this. You know, learning to get comfortable taking risks in our lives is gonna allow you the chance to really be who you wanna be and be doing what you want, not just what the culture tells you. Um, and it's gonna continue for your whole life. You're gonna change, you're gonna shed a lot of skins along the way. You'll be caught in messy middles. Things that are unexpected are going to keep happening. So if you can find a way to enjoy the anticipation of that and play with the possibilities, you're gonna be much happier and more successful. Um, there's really just, there's a lot of fun growing and changing into your next phase. And the trick is really just to give yourself permission to improvise and explore it. Thank you so much. I'll leave you with a way that you can contact me. And thank you so much.